Jose, feels good to be in the win column for the 2022 season. Feels horrible that we lost our starting quarterback for the year, but I guess this is when it comes in handy that you have fire insurance and we had Jimmy Garoppolo on the roster. How are you feeling about that week two game against the Seahawks? Mixed emotions, I'm sure. Oh, definitely mixed emotions. Um, You're happy with the win. Uh, Of course, you'll take a win with a division rival, of course, the team that's given us a lot of trouble over the past few years. Um, Getting them uh, early in the schedule and at home was pretty pivotal. And I think getting that win was huge. But yeah, I think the bigger story here was Trey Lance going down for the year uh, with the broken ankle. Uh, But you mentioned it. Hats off to John Lynch and whoever was involved in getting Jimmy Garoppolo back on this team. Because if that didn't happen just a few weeks ago, we'd be talking about this being the end of the 49ers 2022 season. Uh, But the fact that Jimmy, a proven guy, a guy that's sticking you to a Super Bowl before, a guy who just less than a year ago literally took you to the NFC Championship and within minutes of going back to the Super Bowl, the fact that you're able to just put him in there and he looked fresh. I'm going to be completely honest. He looked great. Uh, from the beginning, he led uh, the Niners to a, a pretty quick touchdown drive. And, you know, it was smooth sailing from there. So, yeah, the, the Trey thing, you, you kind of feel bad for him because, you know, you never want to see a guy go out that way. And you never, especially if he's going to be the future quarterback for your franchise. But overall, can't really complain with the win either. I'm just happy that we were able to beat a team. Yes, a bad Seattle team, but a team that we were unsure of going into the week. Obviously, they had the win against Denver in week one and we're coming off that horrible loss to the Chicago. And you know, the thing I take away early on from the play calling and Trey Lance and the question marks that will persist into this coming year is he looked fine in the first couple of series that he got to play. I thought like the offense was moving the ball. Well, I didn't think anything was particularly wrong with the offense. So at least we saw signs of growth in seeing him out there for as limited time as we did. Unfortunately, Jimmy Garoppolo took over this game pretty early on. So the rest of the game is just pure analysis of how Jimmy did. And I I think, like you said, Jimmy came in, sling the ball around, and the offense looked fine. I mean, 27 points, put up 27 in this effort. Good day. The only slip up, of course, was the um, field goal that got blocked. And that was the only points that the Seahawks were able to put up. So that tells you how dominant an effort by the defense it is. And I, I think to not get too wound up in the quarterback situation, because we'll talk the quarterback situation a lot, the defense looked excellent. A couple sacks from Nick Bosa. Uh, we, we have guys just flying around. Tell no Hufanga is turning into a star on this team. Saw everything that we were hoping to, except in that second half of that game against the Bears, you know. So starting to see some positive signs of growth, special teams. You know, what what can you do? We let one go there. But I mean, that pretty much wraps up kind of like my thought process on the game. Any other takeaways or any big things not quarterback related? Oh, definitely the defense. Um, you mentioned it. Uh, besides that second half against Chicago, the defense has been absolutely dominant. And yeah, I know that the Bears offense and the Seahawks offense isn't the most dynamic, uh, but this defense is going to get its real test here in the next few weeks. But just what we've been able to see over the past, the first two games is that they're, they could be, this is the making of a pretty dominant defense, you know, a defense that is finally improved, much more improved in the secondary than when it was the past couple of seasons. And then the front seven is just, just as dominant as it has been, I think. And the linebacking core, we were actually able to extend Drake Greenlaw for a couple more years in, in his contract. So that was huge. And he's been playing lights out. Uh, Fred Werner's, uh, you know, all pro Fred is playing at an all pro level again. And Nick Bosa, what can you say about that guy? I mean, he's starting to get into the backfield just almost every other time that he rushes a quarterback. And that's exactly what you human. need from him. He's a superhuman. And then now the interior defense, defensive line is starting to pitch in as well and just creating a bunch of problems for at least for Justin Fields and for Geno Smith now. Now we'll see how, uh, how that kind of portrays against, you know, better competition. But from what we've seen right now, that defense is, is in the making of, of being a really dominant one, I think. It's nice and refreshing to see a safety that can catch the ball. That is something that the Niners need. <laughs> uh, no, tell oh, no, Tell him Fungo is really coming on strong in the early going. I'm impressed by him. I'm impressed by Bosa. I'm impressed by the line. Uh, we'll get into the quarterback situation again. But, you know, overall, good dominant effort. This is the type of dominant effort you need to have against these bad teams if you're going to establish yourself as a Super Bowl contender. Coming into the year, looked at the Niners and thought of them as a team that could compete at the highest level, that can compete with the Rams, last year's Super Bowl champion, could compete with the Chiefs, the Bills, if it came down to it. This is the type of performance you needed to just show that you're still on that level, show that you can still beat up on bad teams. Now you get into these matchups where we have a couple of weeks where you're going to take on some good teams, 
and you just need to have competitive efforts. If you drop one of the two, I don't think anyone's going to beat you over the head with it. You just need to go in there and perform each game strong. I'd obviously love the Niners be three and one by the end of this stretch and go into a games against Carolina and the Falcons, but I will gladly take a split in the next two games. Again, good to be in the wind column, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for some quick Seattle wrap up. I know that there's a bigger storyline here and we'll talk about the bigger storyline and some other videos for now, like the video, comment below your thoughts on the game, subscribe to the channel. 49 reasons to listen to right here. Juju and Jose stay safe, happy and healthy. We'll see you next time.